This is my Dell Dimension 4600. And today we're going to install Linux on it and see what it's like running a modern Linux distro on such old hardware. As I mentioned, that is my Dell PC. It's, it's here. Uh, and it is primarily used as a Windows XP gaming machine. We got it from a car boot last year for like £20, did some upgrades to it, put a new graphics card in, and currently it's running a Pentium 4 running at 2.66 gigahertz, has two gigabytes of RAM, and it has an ATI 3650 AGP graphics card with 512 megabytes of VRAM. So for Windows XP gaming, it's actually pretty decent. It's a really nice sweet spot as far as I'm concerned. It's not so powerful that everything runs full graphics all the time, it's kind of just a realistic gaming experience for what would have been a realistic machine at the time. And for the fact that I got the machine itself for 20 quid and a few upgrades, I'm really happy with it. But what I did realize is I've never tried installing Linux on it. And if you're familiar with this channel, that's something we tend to do with any hardware that I get. So it seemed a bit odd that I hadn't already done that. So today we're going to install Debian 12, the 32-bit version, as the CPU in here is only 32-bit. And we're going to see what it's like in 2025. Could you get a decent experience out of this on the modern web? What about running some modern applications? What could we actually do here? I'm not expecting the most amazing setup, but for a modern secure operating system that means you could actually take this thing online uh, that's still pretty cool because lord knows i have not plugged this thing into any kind of network <laughs> with the windows xp install that it currently has it does currently also have an ide hard drive in there which is starting to sound a bit iffy so i've dug out an ssd which we're going to use and i also recently bought a IDE to SATA adapter from StarTech, which uh, seems like a perfect time to test that out and make sure that that's working fine as well. This machine does actually have SATA ports on it, so I wouldn't have to do that, uh, but it doesn't have the SATA power connectors, so I'd have to get an adapter. So if I'm going to have to get an adapter anyway, I might as well try out an IDE to SATA adapter because I think that'll be a useful tool to have anyway um, with older systems. So let's get that uh, SSD installed and get some Linux going. So this is the little adapter from StarTech, which we're going to be testing out as part of this. Um, it takes a floppy power in, which is kind of cool. Keeps it nice and compact, but I do have an adapter as well. I don't think I have a spare floppy head. And then the random SSD that we'll be using for this, which is just a crucial 500 gigabyte SSD, which at some point was used for Windows gaming, apparently. Who knows? Anyway, let's crack this open. This case is not in the best condition. The side doesn't actually fit properly anymore. It's pretty beaten up, but it was from a car boot for basically 20 pounds. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. Here is the insides of the machine. Uh, this is our current hard drive, which is screwed in with a lot of screws. And it's one of these metal cages, which is a pain to get out and it slices up your fingers and everything else. So we're just gonna leave that in there for now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that, but we are going to remove the power and the IDE cable. We're going to get our adapter and plug it in to our SSD like that. And then in terms of power, I don't think, no, because the only floppy connector I have is actually being used on the graphics card, which is another interesting quirk of that card. But anyway, we can use this adapter here to just plug into there. And then we've got normal Molex. So we can then use one of these on here, uh, like that. There we go. And our IDE cable can go into here. If we can get one of those pins is a little bit bent on the adapter card, but we should be able to still get that. I'll also help if I put it the right way around. <laughs> uh, I hate these IDE cables, but there we go. That is on there. Okay, so we're just going to kind of leave that uh, like that. I'm sure that's perfectly safe and won't be a problem at all. 
All right, let's um, get our boot disk and plug it in to Ethernet because we are using the net install, so it does require an Ethernet connection just to install. And uh, let's get some Linux going. So we're all set up. Unfortunately, this is the monitor we're working with today. It is a bit beaten up and filthy, but it should be all right once we turn it on. So like I say, have our install medium. So we'll pop that into the machine and we shall boot from that. I think, I don't actually know what's currently on the SSD to be completely honest. It's just booted straight through to the CD. So I'm guessing not a lot was on that SSD. Cool, okay, so straight into Debian 12 installer, no problem at all, I like that. Booting from disks really was a simpler time. USB just always gives me so much issue, but here we go anyway, let's get it all set up and going. getting some IO errors but hopefully we will still boot through. We'll see. Okay, that took a minute but we are into the installer. Oh the mouse is super sensitive but we are into the installer so let's go through this. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is why I don't like CDs. Uh, it doesn't seem to be reading the data well. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if we can do something else instead. So I've just checked with my uh, Ventoy USB drive, and this machine does actually allow you to boot from USB. So we're going to load up the Debian full non-net install ISO onto my Ventoy um, USB drive, and we're gonna try booting from that instead. Oh, rave mode has been activated again, sorry. Focus, thank you. Okay, back in a second. All right, let's see if we have any luck doing this over USB using the full installer. I will say that this machine does only have a 100-bit ethernet port, it doesn't have gigabit, so, we may end up wanting to upgrade anyway if we were to actually use this online properly. We'll see how we go. We may have to do that as well if the Ethernet card isn't actually working at all. Uh, I've never taken this machine online, so I don't know. Well, that's a good sign. Let's try the graphical installer again. The other benefit of doing this with the USB drive is even with just USB 2, this is still way quicker than using a CD. <laughs> it looks like it actually did detect the Ethernet there, so maybe it was just that it wasn't able to load what it needed off the disk. Interesting. Anyway. Of course, using a super secure, secure password and using the same password for the root password. Not necessarily the best idea, but this is fine for this purpose.
and it looks like it has found our drive yes it has there we go there is our 500 gigabyte ssd excellent okay well the adapter's working that's cool as well one week later okay we are all set up and uh, obviously we have to start with an obligatory neo fetch so there we go even that takes a second to run which is eh, not not too hopeful but nonetheless uh, i didn't have to install any additional drivers the ethernet is working it has picked up our amd graphics card we've got our pentium 4 and our two gigabytes of ram everything is quite happy there using xfce is also a very good choice from a window manager perspective we're only using about 300 megabytes of ram running the system so yeah i'm very happy with that i'm you know i am impressed in that regards now i had a look in terms of trying to find a different web browser there wasn't many options available that were kind of still the modern web but uh 32 bit and kind of low resource it's kind of a mix up between firefox and a mix up between chromium so we're sticking we're sticking with firefox and uh we'll have a look around so if we need to like search things that doesn't do too bad of a job you know i think this considering the fact that we're running 20 year old hardware i think what it can actually do is it is fairly impressive so things like wikipedia pages it it renders okay scrolling isn't great but like you can get access to information if you need to you can use things like google or other kind of maybe more stripped down search engines so you know it, it's functional as you can imagine probably not going to have the best youtube experience but nonetheless well let's give it a go let's just see if this might surprise us we do have that graphics card we do have 500 megabytes of uh, vram maybe something can happen there even with that 100 bit ethernet i was still getting about 10 megabytes per second um, download speeds when i was downloading packages so you know it's not topping out my internet but it's a, it's a decent enough speed it's certainly manageable for for these kind of purposes so the loading speeds for seeding are not down to that ethernet port it's definitely down to processing the data uh, even on kind of the channel page it's it's a little bit laggy let's see about running a video though and kind of no surprise even the adverts are slideshows so yeah i'm not expecting this to go to go well and even trying to run it a video at 144p uh we've still got a slideshow so we've got a pixelated mess and it's a slideshow as well so that's a real shame uh, on that front but i'm not completely surprised let's be fair here but what else could we use this machine for and unfortunately it's the same sort of thing with local video playback as well certainly at higher resolutions it just does not play ball but what else could we do well we do have some uh, office functionality here so for example if we try out LibreOffice so this is LibreOffice uh, 7.4 and you know what it's okay it's not completely keeping up with the keystrokes actually you know what now it's settling down um it's going pretty it's doing pretty well actually so you could definitely use this as a, a word processing machine if that's something you wanted to do i'm not quite sure what's going on with all the icons here i don't know if that's a bug or what but uh, some of the icons seem to be missing or blurred out weird anyway you could definitely do word processing with, with with this which is which is good you know another use case for an old machine but what about the thing that we're all here for this is being used as a windows xp gaming machine well what can, what gaming can we do under linux and kind of true to the linux nature i tried to stick with some open source free games uh first of which is mind test which is basically a re-implementation of minecraft and this actually works pretty well you know it is completely playable it's a it's not super smooth but it is playable you can definitely kind of do minecrafty things i don't i've never really played this to any full extent i must admit i normally play the full game uh but this is definitely functional um 
and yeah it is it is it is a workable game um i'm going down into the dark which is probably not wise on the for the camera but <laughs> yeah it works you could play this you could play a block building game like you know what is minecraft uh on on this old hardware and that's that's pretty cool i'm a fan of this um there is also of course classic cube i went with this because this is actually in the debian repositories so super straightforward to install no problem there at all very happy with that actually that's uh, very cool another game that plays really well is open arena this is the kind of unreal tournament-esque uh clone if you like again completely open source and i've definitely found that this runs really nicely on pretty high settings so yeah you can get some pretty nice kind of old school arena type death matches going on here it's 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 pretty cool i can't actually find anyone to shoot but uh and i you know i'm bad at the game but generally speaking it, it's it's a pretty decent experience again um i don't have any audio mainly because i don't have any speakers actually connected up to the system at the moment so fortunately um uh, yeah we're, we're having to just do with uh, my voice but the game runs incredibly smoothly and it is pretty impressive. Another game that works really well, even with a little bit of lag at the higher settings, but still really good, is Zero AD, which is a great kind of Age of Empires type clone. Uh, this works really well and is actually a really cool, very complete game. It's under active development, definitely worth checking it out. But this also plays pretty nicely. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this as well. That's cool. So generally speaking, this is a pretty good experience. I'm very happy with this. Well, there you have it. Uh, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised. I feel like video playback and stuff should have been better than it was. Uh, that is to say it should work really, even 1080p. But other than that, as long as you're not trying to do anything video related, it kind of works quite well. A lot of the kind of retro Linux games on there work very well. Uh, you could certainly do some old emulation with this as well if you were looking to emulate old consoles and you could even get online pretty decently i wouldn't want to browse the modern web much but if you just need to connect for things like emails or accessing FTT ftp servers or even using this as some very basic file server uh, on your network you can repurpose it and it does function um so you know it's cool that even now, 20 years on from when this hardware was new, uh, yeah, you can still make use of this kind of hardware and definitely save it from the landfill. For me personally, this will be going back to a Windows XP gaming machine. I think that's where this, this hardware really shines, is being able to play those old titles uh, as they were intended on the actual operating system and the actual hardware that they were intended for. So yeah, that's where this will be going back to. But still, this has been a lot of fun. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I have enjoyed putting it together. I always enjoy tinkering with Linux and seeing what weird and wonderful things we can do. And uh, yeah, there we go. So we're going to wrap it up. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.